My lab is purifying olfactory ligands, such as pheromones, and then using these ligands as a simplified and control environment to be able to stimulate the underlying relevant neurons in the brain that generate stereotyped behaviors, such as aggression, fear, and now suckling in newborns. Soon after birth, all mammals must successfully find a nipple and suckle in order to survive. In almost all species studies, this innate behavior requires the sense of smell. But the identity of the special odors, the neurons detect them, and how they differ from other odor ligands is mostly unknown. Almost 10 years ago, a pheromone sufficient to initiate suckling by itself was isolated from the European rabbit. This mammary pheromone is a volatile chemical called 2-methylbut-2-anal found in the milk of lactating does. Our study set out to identify the ligands, the odor cues, that trigger first suckling in the mouse, which is a more tractable model organism. Isolating these ligands would provide the means to activate, identify, and study the underlying neural circuit in the mouse. We first created a behavioral bioassay to evaluate potential suckling ligands. The initiation of innate suckling occurs one time in an animal's life, soon after it's born. Once an animal has performed and experienced suckling once, the reinforcing properties of the milk, such as its sweet taste, its warmth and the satiety it provides, conditions the animal to repeat the behaviour. So we can only perform our analysis to identify innate triggers one time per newborn animal. Moreover, we needed to use pups that had been delivered by caesarean section to be absolutely sure that they had not yet previously experienced suckling. The caesarean section pups are not motile or able to support themselves, so we gently held them by the back of their neck, about one centimetre away from the anaesthetised dam. After several seconds, they became animated and began to search. On average, it took only about 20 seconds to begin stereotyped jaw movements, easily recognisable as suckling. To confirm that olfaction was important for innate suckling, we first washed the nipple with water. This simple process of washing away the odours was enough to severely disrupt the pup's ability to locate the nipple and suckle. We found it quite remarkable that we could move the pup so that he touches the wash nipple, and even this direct contact was not enough to elicit the stereotypical animation or suckling behaviour. Since washing the nipple eliminates innate suckling behaviour, we reasoned that painting the bioactive ligand on the nipple would restore suckling. Indeed, here we paint the nipple with odours derived from the mum and find suckling is initiated in about 20 seconds. Through a process of elimination, we identified that amniotic fluid contained the critical suckling ligands. A combination of size fractionation and behaviour revealed that the bioactivity was due to at least two distinct ligands. Some pheromones are made of two components, but this does make chemically identifying them much harder. Here's why. By mass spec, we found amniotic fluid to contain about 3,000 ligands in total. To find two bioactive ligands that act in combination, we would need to expose animals to pairs of fractionations in an iterative process. We calculate that this process would require over 660 caesarean delivered mice, and that's if there were only two ligands, but the bioactivity may have been due to three or four ligands, which would massively increase the complexity of this experiment. So before we tackled this technical feat, we decided to confirm that there really was a pheromone to find. A pheromone is a cue that it's identical between groups of animals of the same species. So a sex pheromone, for example, would be produced by all sexually mature males. There's another type of socially relevant cue called a signature odor that is a blend of ligands unique to an individual. It is what gives an individual their unique smell. A signature odor cannot be purified as we described because it is inherently variable and made up of different ligands from individual to individual. A pheromone should still be active in any combination of signature odor, but a signature odor by definition, should not be active when its composition changes. We therefore altered the signature order of amniotic fluid by altering the diet of pregnant dams. One set was given plain water, another set water with garlic oil added, 
and a final group, water with vanillin added. We used mass spectrometry and calcium imaging to prove that this indeed changed the smell, the signature odour of each amniotic fluid. Finally, we tested to see if the pups from each of these mothers would respond to the different types of amniotic fluid. We found no evidence of the expected pheromone. Pups only suckled in the presence of a familiar signature odour. This was surprising because it indicates that this, perhaps the most important mammalian behaviour, is not actually hardwired. Instead, the pup must learn the signature odour of the mum. However, because the pup is exposed to her signature odour throughout gestation and birth, and the mum always emits the signature odour when the pup must first suckle, the result is that it works just like a pheromone. Our conclusion from these experiments is that mammals have evolved different mechanisms to get the same result. They both involve the sense of smell, which is highly developed at birth, but utilize different mechanisms. Whether signature odors underlie other behaviors that appear innate remains to be determined.